Recently, I was on an airplane, and I'm chatting with the person next to me. She asked me what I do for a living, so I say, I'm a mathematician. She visibly recoiled. <laughs> I'm not a math person. And the thing is, this happens to me all the time, right? Far too many people have had really bad experiences with mathematics, and they feel it for the rest of their lives. But as a math professor, I kind of like math and uh, teaching it. And here are, there they are. Here's a few of the students from my calculus classes in recent years. Um, but these are not average students. Every one of these students is gifted, entering university with a full-ride academic scholarship. And even some of these students don't think they're math people, which is very puzzling because their academic uh, records clearly suggest otherwise. So I began to investigate this math person puzzle. Why is it that so many people have really negative emotional reactions to mathematics? And why is it that even some really gifted people are not immune to these things? I found three major components. Uh, the first one is the binary myth, the idea that humans come in two types. You're either a math person or you're not, one or the other. <laughs> but is that right? Like, are we born in categories? Is that how it works for other things like height and weight? Well, this is the distribution of height of 30-year-old women. 15% are five foot four, 14% are five foot five, and so on. Women don't come in two types, they're not short or tall, there's a bell curve that describes the distribution. But height is not a cognitive measure, so maybe math ability is different. This is the distribution of scores on the math portion of the SAT. Not sure about you, but I don't see any evidence for two types, and yet it's widely believed that the graph for math people looks like this. I gotta say, I'm like embarrassed. Most of my life, I actually believed in this. And it is embarrassing, right? But you know, in our society, math people are also considered smart people. And so I felt really special. Like I felt when my teachers, family, and friends, they put humanity in two categories and I was in the smart one, right? Like that felt really good. But what's horrible is that a few really gifted students apparently got a different message. So let's be crystal clear. Math is a skill. It's not a trait, right? And just like with other skills, whether it's reading, exercise, or whatever, practice and persistence are the keys to proficiency. Small incremental improvements accumulate over time. Okay, but it can be hard to persist, right? It can be hard to spend years making small incremental improvements in an uncomfortable environment. And the second thing that we have to talk about is the fact that a lot of math classes are cold, low empathy environments. Now, this is partly the binary nature of math problems, right? You either get the correct answer or you don't. It's black or white, it's right or wrong. And when math is a proxy for smart, it's very easy to feel dumb when you get the wrong answer. And in case students don't already feel it, far too many are told they're dumb by a teasing classmate or even worse, an adult, when they get the wrong answer. Another very aversive fact is the way math is used by other disciplines. At the university level, calculus is notorious for high failure rates. And sometimes other disciplines, engineering, pre-medicine, they might use those high failure rates as a way to sort of weed out their majors. And make no mistake, amongst students in a calculus class, it's absolutely common knowledge that they are the weeds. Finally, I have to acknowledge my own contribution uh, to low empathy math environments. For most of my career, I thought teaching was just a presentation of facts. I thought a good math lecture was one where you had carefully chosen examples, where you did accurate calculations, articulate explanations. It was all about the math. It was never about people. But recently, a colleague pointed out to me that my job is not to teach math, it's to teach people. And how those people feel 
about math and themselves and me and how I'm interacting with them has a huge impact on whether or not my lecture makes any sense. I really wish I had understood this 30 years ago and kind of apologized to my students from a long time ago, sorry. Um, anyway, the third thing that we have to talk about is pretty uncomfortable. It's sexist, racist stereotypes about who is supposed to be good at mathematics. So let's acknowledge the elephants in the room. We've all internalized the ideas that Asians are better at math than white people, that white people are better at math than black and brown people, and that men are better at math than women. These stereotypes are like a nasty little virus. They infect you when you're young, without your knowledge or your consent. But just because we're all infected doesn't mean that we're equally impacted. I, I once, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get through this. I once asked my calculus class, what are the stereotypes about you when it comes to success in mathematics? The men didn't really understand the question, but the women did. Uh, an African-American woman raised her hand and she said, people don't think black girls are smart enough to be good at math. She was 18 years old and she carried that weight to class every single day with grit and grace. Which brings me to a heartbreaking conclusion. When you take the binary myth and a low empathy environment and you filter those things through deeply held stereotypes and bias, what you get is differential impact. So what I mean by this is that the binary myth is demoralizing for anybody, but it impacts black women more than white men. Being in a low empathy environment, feeling stupid when you get the wrong answer, that's not fun for anyone, but it impacts women more than men. And this is not just an opinion. There's tons of research that demonstrates differential impacts. For instance, there was a recent study on how math exams are graded at the middle school level. When students' exams are graded by their teacher, boys outperform girls. When their exams are graded blindly, girls outperform boys. Why? Well, probably because their teachers are giving boys a little more benefit of the doubt, maybe more partial credit for ambiguous work, a sort of implicit bias reinforcing an ugly stereotype about who is supposed to be good at math. Even amongst my really talented students, differential impacts are a real thing and they can be a big deal. There was a stunning study published just last year where physics professors were asked to assess candidates for a junior faculty position. Now, these candidates were for a faculty position in physics. They all had PhDs in physics, extremely good at math. What the professors didn't know is that actually all the resumes were identical. The only thing that was different was the name at the top. Some had white male names, some had Hispanic female names, and so on. Well, when the evaluations came in, the resumes that had male names at the top were rated higher than the resumes with female names at the top across the board. When you took race into consideration, those with white names and Asian names were rated higher than those with Hispanic and African American names. And when both race and gender were taken into consideration, African American women and Hispanics were rated least hireable. Now let this sink in. University professors looked at identical resumes and rated them differently based on the race and gender of the name at the top. For some of my students, very talented, who've already went through elementary school, middle school, high school, swimming upstream while white men like me just have to swim, this sexist, racist future awaits. So, what are we going to do? Well, one thing we can all do is accept the overwhelming scientific evidence. In fact, learning about this evidence had a huge role in my own evolution over the years. For instance, humans are not binary. 
Humans always fall on a continuum, and math ability is no different. What we believe and say about math and who's good at it, it matters a lot and it impacts kids. So check yourself and be vigilant. Stereotypes exist, bias is real, and women, particularly women of color, pay a heavy price. These things are facts and we must accept them. If you only take away one thing from this talk, I hope it's this. Math people is a myth that needs to die. Math is a skill to be learned, not a trait that you're born with or without. So please be very careful what you say, particularly around children. They don't need to be infected with any more nasty little viruses. I want to close with a special message to people like me, to white men. It's time for us to stop talking and start walking the walk. Sexism is not a woman problem, it's a man problem. Racism is not a problem with the marginalized, it's a problem with those in power. And it's time for us to get off the bench, into the game, and join those who have been fighting the good fight for a very long time. Because whether we're in the context of mathematics or much more broadly, it's absolutely outrageous to put the burden of change on the very people who are underrepresented, marginalized, and discriminated against. That is on us, the ones who have enjoyed the benefits of a patriarchal social structure forever. So please, accept the very uncomfortable fact that our resumes probably would have been rated lower if the name at the top had been an Hispanic woman's, and do something to ensure that everybody has the same opportunities that we had. Thank you.